Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this course I'm going to show you how to use iCloud in your iOS apps. We're going to go through the whole plethora of things you have to do, from setting up your app, and we're going to discuss the three golden technologies of iCloud. There's key value storage, there's document storage, and there is iCloud with core data. We're going to discuss it all in this course. In this course, I'm going to show you how to use iCloud in your iOS apps. And iCloud is really just an umbrella term for three distinct technologies, and they're all implemented slightly differently. And in this course, we're going to look at all of them. But iCloud is more complex than that, so here's what we're going to look at today. First, and this is often overlooked, is the step where we need to prepare your app for iCloud use with Xcode. So this means we have to go to the Apple Member Center and create an app ID as well as a provisioning profile so that we can test it on real devices. And then we're going to look at the first of three iCloud technologies, which is called iCloud Key Value Storage. This is something akin of user defaults. If you know how to use user defaults, you'll find iCloud Key Value Storage very familiar. The second iCloud technology we're going to look at is document storage. And this is something where you have more or less a shared iCloud folder, and your app can push any file or any other folder into that iCloud folder and other devices can access that data and sync with it. That's a bit more complex to set up, but we're going to have a look at how that works. And the third technology that we're going to look at is uh, complex in itself, which is core data, and we're going to have a look at how to use iCloud with core data. Implementing that is fairly simple as of iOS 7, but core data, of course, is a complex technology, and we're not going to look at how to use core data in this course, just how to make it work with iCloud. But if you're interested in that, there is another course on my website which deals with core data specifically, and that's the one to watch. The tools we're going to use in this exercise are my favorite Xcode release so far, Xcode 5.1, and we're going to do this for iOS 7.1. We can't use the simulator because it doesn't give very real-life accurate results, so we're going to have to use two real devices. But I will show you how things work on the simulator as well and why we can't really use it. So first, let's have a look at how you can set up your Xcode project so that your app can use iCloud. We are not going to actually touch Xcode for this. We're going to use our favorite web browser and log into the Apple Developer Member Center. This is developer.apple.com, and then from there we're going to do some creative navigating. I'm going to show you where that is and how that works. In the Member Center, we need to create an explicit app ID. A wildcard ID will not work, neither will the flick switch that is in Xcode. It's not going to be able to just switch on iCloud and it'll make it work on your provision development devices. Sadly not, we're going to have to create an explicit app ID. And once we've done that, we need to create a provisioning profile, a developer provisioning profile with that explicit app ID. And that's going to tie that reverse domain app ID together with the devices that are on your system and are registered for development. Once we have that, we need to give that bundle ID to our app. Xcode is trying to be very helpful there and creates a default bundle ID for us. That's probably not the one we want unless you give it a very specific file name. We're going to look at that as well. And the last step to make this all work is to switch on the iCloud entitlements in Xcode. That'll create a file with a certain entry and that will set up your app for use with iCloud. Let's have a look at how this works. To prepare our app for iCloud use, we need to create a couple of things here in the Apple Member Center. So head over to developer.apple.com, and that takes you to this page. Over here under the iOS section, click on the iOS Dev Center. That'll take you to another screen. You usually have to log in. I'm already logged in, so that makes it a bit easier. On the right-hand side here, you find a section called Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles. Go ahead, click on that. This will take you to yet another screen, and it really doesn't matter which exact link in the iOS section you click on, they all take us to the same screen. So I'm going to click on Identifiers here. And this is the screen I was talking about. Depending on what you selected previously, you'll just pre-select any of these categories on the left-hand side here. So we're already on App IDs. If you're not there, just click it, and it'll show you a big list or short list of current App IDs that you've got on the system. So the ID is really the reverse domain bundle identifier that we know from Xcode, and the name for that is something human-readable that lets us identify 
which app is this for. Head over here and click the plus button to add a new one. Give it a description, so I'm going to call it iCloud Screencast. That's just your human readable description here. App ID, uh, you may have more than one. I don't actually know why I have three here, but the, the, your team ID is the one that you want to pick. And here comes a selection about the app ID suffix. So we have the choice of explicit app ID and wildcard app ID. Let's not use the wildcard app ID. That's the one that's not going to work for what we're going to do. So we need an explicit app ID here, especially if we wanted to release this app on the App Store later. So I'm going to call mine, this is the reverse domain notation here, I'm going to call mine com.pinkstonepictures.icloud, or lowercase. And we need that in Xcode, so I'm going to copy that so I can paste it into Xcode later. Just remember what it is. On the bottom here, the app services, this is where we add the capabilities that we want this app ID to have. Game Center and in-app purchase is always going to be pre-selected and it's grayed out so you can't unselect it. So every app ID comes with that. But all the others, iCloud, Interapp, Audio, Passbook, Push Notifications, they're unticked. We want to use iCloud so we need to tick it, obviously. Hit Continue. And Xcode will confirm your selections. iCloud is switched on, that's very important. And you've got your reverse domain notation and the team ID on here as well. This is important because all this identifies your iCloud folder. Hit Submit, and the app ID has been registered. That's that. Let's click Done, and the second step we need to do is create a Development Provisioning Profile. That's down here under Provisioning Profiles, Development. Some of these will say they're managed by Xcode and every time you create a new app in Xcode and you give it any sort of Apple capability, Xcode will create a team managed team provisioning profile for you here. We don't want to do that. We want, uh, we want to manage ours ourselves. So again, let's click on the plus sign here. And the question is, are we creating one for development or for App Store distribution? Well, we want one for development right now, but when it comes to distributing your app later, you need to create another one and select this option here. The difference is that this distribution profile does not tie any development devices to your provisioning profile, whereas this one will. So right now we want to test this thing. Let's select it, iOS app development, and hit continue. This will bring up a list of all the current app IDs that you have on your system. And this is where that human readable identifier really comes into place uh, because I've called my iCloud screencast and this has got my identifier here. So let's select that. Obviously don't you know, select your own, <laughs> obviously. Hit continue. And this will let you select which certificates you want to tie this to. I'm gonna select all of mine Usually you only have the one, perhaps you have two, but if you're working across other teams as well, if you're working for other companies, you may have other certificates here. So select the correct one and hit continue. I know this sounds all very intimidating, but really once you get the hang of it, it's fairly simple. The next screen here lets you select which development devices you would like to tie to this profile. I'm going to select all of mine here. This, these are your devices, any device that in Xcode you've ever declared as a development device. Select the ones you like and hit continue. Give the profile a name. So I'm going to call mine iCloud Screencast as well. Again, this is just a identifier that allows you to find this in the wealth of provisioning profiles you may have. And hit generate. After a few seconds, the member center comes back and you either have the choice to download your profile or not and let Xcode do the hard work. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to base all these exercises on the same profile. And in this case, I'm going to start with a single view application. In total, in this course, we're going to make three completely different applications, so three brand new applications. I'm going to call this iCloud key value. Just make it for iPhone, keeps it nice and simple. And the company identifier, we're not going to worry about that here, we're going to take care of that in the next screen. Hit next, pick a nice place to save this, for example, your desktop, and hit create. Now that's our app 
fresh out of the box. It's not really set up for iCloud yet. So let's take care of that. Do you remember that bundle identifier that we had? Let's do that first. Up here, under general identity, you notice that you can change the first part here, but you can't really change the second part. That's grayed out. And that's because Xcode uses a variable for this and by default doesn't let you change that. We, however, do need to change that because otherwise my bundle ID, if I try to paste that in, would look wrong. It's just not exactly what I want here. So over here under the info section, you can find under custom iOS target properties, the second option, the bundle identifier. If you click that, you'll see this scary variable here. So you see com dot your domain dot and then string product name RFC 1034 identifier. You think, yes, that's, you know. Anyway, uh, just double click that and take that scary variable out. In fact, just replace it with your entire bundle ID that you've pasted in, that you've copied from the uh, member center. If you do that, hit return and go back to general, you find that that grayed out bit is gone. So you can now amend this or change it over here. So that's very important. That's step one. The bundle identifier needs to match your app ID of the provisioning profile. Speaking of that, under team down here, select your team. Mine's Pinkstone Pictures LLC. It'll take a little bit of time for Xcode to do something. And once it's done that, it's time to import our profile into Xcode, the one that we've just generated. It is fairly easy to do, but there are caveats and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Head over to Xcode and Preferences, which brings up this little window here. On the top here, select Accounts, That'll take you to a screen that should have your Apple ID in here. It may even have more than one Apple ID if you're working across several teams. I'm assuming you're an iOS agent. You may not have the Mac agent here. You may just have a join button, but we're not worried about that. As long as it says agent here, you're fine. And hit view details. This will bring up a very long list of all the code signing identities and provisioning profiles you have currently installed on your system. We need to click this little button down here on the bottom left to refresh all those provisioning profiles because we've just added one. And once this comes back, your brand new provisioning profile should be here. And there it is, iCloud Screencast. Xcode can be temperamental here, so you may be in luck by just hitting close, closing this, and selecting this right away. But I've had trouble with this in the past, and I must admit, it is probably much healthier to quit Xcode and relaunch Xcode, because otherwise it comes back with false positives. I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, it's not pretty. Save yourself a lot of trouble just by reopening Xcode here. Under build settings, you have this very long list of stuff, much of which you'll never want to touch. The stuff we're looking for is the code signing section, and you can find it by scrolling here, but it's also very easy to just use that, that search field here and uh, type in code signing. There we go. Code signing. Ah, Zen. I like it when there's not that much stuff here. That confuses me. Down here under provisioning profile, you can select what we've just imported. So again, this is going to be a long list if you've, if you've developed a few apps, and ours is going to be iCloud Screencast. So select that, and notice that the code signing identity options up here will uh, automatically change. This is what's supposed to happen, this is good. So in my case, this is all saying iPhone developer, and that's perfect, all we're doing is testing this. There's one last thing we need to do in order to prepare our app for iCloud, and that is over here on the capabilities section. We need to tell Xcode that we wanna use iCloud specifically. You can open this here, this little um, hook, and Xcode will explain a little bit what it does here. So uh, turning on iCloud will add the iCloud entitlement to your app ID, very important, and add the iCloud container identifier entitlement to your entitlements file. That sounds cryptic, but all it means is it will generate a file in here that makes it possible for your app to communicate with Apple's backend so that iCloud data can be safely saved. So let's just flick that switch on Xcode goes to work, and what we want to do is tick this box as well, very important, key value store, because that's what we're going to do in the first exercise. Tick that, and just note that ubiquity container here, it's not going to matter for 
the first exercise we're going to do, but it will matter for the second one. And that is it. That is your app set up for use with iCloud. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to make iCloud work with the key value store. The free portion of the video ends here, but if you'd like to see the full version, you can. Just sign up to my member section on my iOS dev diary at pinkstone.co.uk. Membership, as you can imagine, has its benefits. For example, you can get access to all the full-length screencasts I've done on this topic. You also get access to hundreds of detailed articles with tips and tricks on iOS development, meant to be understood and written in a way that you can actually follow them. Membership also comes with a convenient bookmarking feature. Articles that are more relevant to you, you just bookmark and you can recall them right there on the website. We also have flexible membership terms, so if you'd rather join for shorter periods of time or for an entire lifetime, we've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Get access to the good stuff right away. Sign up now at pinkstone.co.uk and I will see you on the other side.